they're going to go quarterback keeper. And Chris Thomas says try a different play there. Number 31, the linebacker for the Buffs, with a hard hit, throws the quarterback for a loss of one, quarter number one. They hand it off to Amaya Boo, and he's hit hard, thrown for a loss. I, I still that was Mosley. Yeah, I still don't think after that screenplay, he has any explosiveness. Gerber will step up and throw, has a man open. It's caught and a hard hit at the end, but hanging onto the football was Tyree Tipton, the true freshman out of Lubbock Monterey High School. And a good job, good concentration, good toughness there to hold on to that football. He got popped. He got popped really good with the guards. Here's Gerber on second down and long. We'll throw it to the far side, up in the air. Great catch by Devin Neal, as it was pretty good coverage on the outside from Kaysen McCullough. And Gerber threw a, a fastball that was a little high. Neal went up and got it. Yeah, he really First did. First half, third down and long play. And Gerber will throw. And again, he's in trouble. Throws, has a man open. It's Kenneth Red Jr. with the catch. And he's still trying to go Closer to the 10-yard line it's, as he stopped at the 11 alert. So technically, you have all four of your tight ends on the field right now. Exactly. One of them is in the backfield, and that's Jordan Johnson. They'll keep it with Jordan Johnson, and Johnson's across. Touchdown buff, stampede, baby, for Jordan Johnson. And now that lead cut in half. That's what the fans have been waiting for. Yeah, from really Flower Mound, Bronkhorst, all day to throw, but he took too long and got hit from behind. Eric Collins was able to make the stop. It was behind the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be a sack there for Collins. And that's one where Bronk new defensive linemen into the game here for the Buffs. One of them, Bryce, is number 14, Maxwell Perez. Yeah, we knew he was going to play a little bit of defense tonight. Alfred Greer is taken down by Eric Collins, who is a player that has started every game since he came to Canyon. Well, and I'll tell you what, he's just one of the best linebackers out there, I feel. Obviously, I feel like he's an All-American candidate. Just by the way he plays, he plays well on the pass, but he's really good on the run as an example of that last tack. Clock is. That was Coach Hughes coming out a few steps to holler some instructions for Nick Gerber through the mask, of course, in 2020. <laughs> I don't think we can get yelled at as much with the mask on. It doesn't count as much. Second down and long here for the Buffs. Gerber steps up, throws down the field, a jump ball. It's a touchdown into the end zone. It's going to be Glenn Mbaku. No flags. What a play. Man, that was fantastic because what an arm for Nick Gerber that time. The defensive back, the safety came up, thought he read it, and he misjudged it. And so you see where Nick just surveys the outfield and then just puts some air under it. The, re the defender came up right there. He kind of stumbled trying to come up and make the interception. Yes. So the redshirt freshman from Frisco, Texas, Mbaku with his first touchdown as a Buffalo. And WT has the lead, 14 to 12. We're on the 28-yard line. Can Bronkhorst come up with a big play? He's going to heave the ball into the end zone. It is up in the air, and it's picked off. It's intercepted by the Buffs, and they're running it back. Aubrey Booker Curran is at midfield, and look at the hustle from number 70, the right tackle, Willis Patrick, as he makes a tackle and saves what possibly could have been. To run to Harris. And watch out, Harris burst free at the 40 to the 50, pushed out of bounds after a great run. And they set that one up. It was beautiful blocking over the right side. And easily Khalil Harris's best run tonight. Brandon Blair will come in. He's in the backfield along with Jordan Johnson. First and 10 buffs. Fake it to Johnson. And a throw to Blair. I think he had one foot in. He did. So that's going to be another first down and another throw to a running back. Yeah. Watch out for Devin Neal at the top of your screen. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Gerber is going to go to Neal. Neal beat his man. The ball's in the air, and it is intercepted. It was tipped through the hands, intercepted to, by Letty French, and he's running it back. Buffs are going to swallow him up, and it's a recovery by Tyree Tipton. What in the world is going on out there? The Buffs 
come away with a turnover after turning it over themselves. Well, Super Bassett, what's your play that you got called up on this one? Fourth down and goal play for the Buffs. Angelo State bringing pressure from every angle. It's Johnson. Jordan with the last surge is across the line. Touchdown, Buffs. Well, I'll tell you what, he went off the left side that time behind Parker Hanna uh, and Al, uh, A.J. Magruder, and then got a little push, and I didn't see who came from behind him and helped push him in, but he got that extra push to get into the Running end zone. The football. It's third down and ten. See what they do. Brockhorst in trouble, and he's sacked. He's taken down by Trayvon Mosley for the sack. Give credit to Victor Smith as well. Nobody was open, but that time they kept him in containment. Again, like I said, Lander used to know the throw. They fake it, throwing off his back foot. It's picked off, picked off by Escalante, and he's bringing it back at the 40, 35. This one is going to be a pick six. See it. Touchdown, Buffalo. Stampede, baby. I'll go back to the pressure on Zach Brockhorst as he had to get rid of it before he wanted it. He's got his helmet off on the side, the kid standing by. And so let's head down to the field. Ken Johnson standing by, ready to go, following that interception. Ken? Boy, you want to talk about an instant dose of enthusiasm. How about a pick six? That really put life both into the stands and the sideline. But what it tells me, and I know you guys are thinking the same upstairs, this is a makeshift lineup that Coach Hughes and the WT coaching staff is working with. But they are starting to gel, play as a team. The scoreboard's showing it right now, guys. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Ken, thanks very Outside, much. Outside, it's caught by Rasheen Green. No, it's dropped. Good play by Aubrey Booker Curran to come in and disrupt that play, That's knock the ball free. Maybe C read that perfectly that time as he was watching the receiver all the way, saw the ball on its flight, and so he comes in, as you can see right here, he'll make contact the exact same time the ball gets there and knocks it free. Nice play by ABC. But well, he's very physical. We saw him before the season started, and you come out on the field and you go, who's that dude? He's 6'1", six, <laughs> six, 200 pound junior. A transfer originally out of Dallas. Okay. 25 seconds remain, third down and 14. Alfred Greer is the running back. Bronkhorst will throw, caught by Dunham at the 30-yard line, and a great tackle again on this drive. It's been a lot of Aubrey Booker Curran. He makes a good tackle, and the Angelo State Rams will have to punt after we come back from this time. What you like to see, Bryce, if you're a WT fan, is the response from the Buffaloes twice, really, in this game. They got down 12 nothing, came back, led at halftime, 14-12. Angelo State has an excellent drive to start the second half, goes up 19-14, and since that point, it's been a 13-0 run by the Buffs. Yeah, they're going to let him get a breather, bring in Khalil Harris right now, but again, I, I don't disagree with the Buffs. Even though they had a tough time getting the running game going tonight, go ahead and run right at him and kind of wear them out as well. Clock under eight minutes. Rams bring the house here in pressure. But watch out, Khalil Harris breaks free. Harris is at the 30 down the sideline, and he stays in. It's a touchdown. Khalil Harris, 50 yards on an incredible run. Well, it was a great run and from the standpoint that they had three receivers on the far sideline, and so they were loaded up. One guy to beat and is able to do that. Watch him sidestep here, go to the near sideline. So they're all it the pressure like is going to go out of bounds. Line. It does. He has one man to beat, sliding over, trying to push him out of bounds, but unable to. For Bronkhorst. In trouble. It's tipped and ne nearly intercepted. If Dennis would have made that one, Tom Brown might have signed him up for the basketball team. A little behind-the-back action there. Well, again, nice effort, nice deflection at the line that time. Third down and six. Angelo State has been very good on third downs tonight. Bronkhorst is in trouble, and he's sacked. It's Dylan Mata that beat his man and makes a big defensive play, throwing the quarterback for a loss. 
And Angelo State's going to have to kick the football back to the bus. Yeah, they're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. They're going to bring out their jumbo package. And you know that's just going to be plowing up. Or they're going up the middle on this one. They've got two timeouts. So if they want, they could use one. It's fourth down in about a yard and a half. Bronkhorst. Out of the gun. We'll hand it off to Amaya Boo, and he's stopped. Are they going to be able to hold on? They are. The Buffs defense comes through in a critical situation, and they get the ball back. Sweet revenge here with the loss earlier in the season. Last month to Angelo State on the road. This time Angelo State comes to Canyon, and the Buffs, for the, Buffs for the first time since 2013, are going to beat Angelo State at home. Well, yeah, very important to pick up a win at home. And the Buffs have won their last three home games they've had here, uh, dating back to last year as well. And, of course, the other thing that makes it a little sweeter, too, is when Angela was here last year and you lost uh, because of a field goal, basically, a couple of opportunities for a kick, that is a nice, yeah. a sweet revenge. So a great game tonight here for played by both teams. West Texas A&M comes away with the win by the final score of 34-27. to 27.